when you actually listen to silence for a couple hours a day, all those yeah buts are gone. You aren't doing things you don't want to do because your people pleaser isn't running the show. Your fear of your trauma isn't running the addictions. And you suddenly are a loud space of possibility. And because the ego is so small, the expansion is doing the talking. Before I even start, I once again want to remind you that when you do anything, make sure you check in with the moment. It is so big that I just take a second, like I did last week, and so much stuff came when I just started by feeling right now. It's so important. If you don't feel right now, you're constantly in a place of, I got to get somewhere else. I got to get this right. I got to do well. And those are all bullshit. They are lies. And our mind is full of so many lies. It's so full of, I got to get over there. It's so constantly tricking you into thinking where you are isn't perfect. No matter what you're feeling, where you are is perfect. No matter if you're like, well, not me, I'm really sad or I'm really broke or whatever. That's perfect, make it perfect. Because if you think you shouldn't be in that situation, you're going to be constantly arguing with what is, which makes it have to show up over and over again. So the first thing I have to do is bring connection to myself, bring freedom to myself, bring this moment to myself. And the freedom only exists in this moment. The connection only exists in this moment. Remember, I can't tell you how many people I work with that go, I'm just not there yet. And I go, that is abuse to say that to yourself. I have never said to my daughter, Vivi, who's 20 months old, why aren't you five years old? You should be somewhere different than you are. And then sometimes people say, I'm not moving as fast as the other people that I work with sometimes. And I go, that also is abuse because you're moving at the pace that you need to move. There's no competition. And the, way, the speed that other people are moving might even be an illusion to you. You might not even know what you're saying. That's wrong, right? You're moving exactly at the speed you need to be moving. So this is really important to take in because often we think we should be in a different place. And if I told Vivi she should be different, then I would be abusive. She should be, abu she should be in a different place. Or how about this? Like when we go, well, people are going to not like me. So I got to form into what I need to be so they like me. Imagine me making my daughter Vivi become what she needs to become so that people like her. We got to get the right clothes on you so people will approve of you. That also would be a horrible thing. I'm going to show Vivi how to be herself or, or hold space for herself to come through. And whoever wants to be around that is perfect, right? That's how you have to also treat yourself. You have to start or you have the opportunity. You don't have to. You can keep saying, I wish I was somewhere else and seeing how much that doesn't do anything for you. But you could also just say, I love where I am. Can you start off loving where you are even if where you are aren't the circumstances that you thought you wanted before. Can you love your exact money situation no matter what is happening with it? Can you love your relationship situation no matter what is happening with it? Can you, can you love every situation around you even if you don't have it where your ego was hoping that it would be? See, that's the illusion. It's not where my ego said it should be. So you have to start off by going, I should be exactly where I am. That's where our power is. Be exactly where I am. The more you go with that, this should be happening, the more power you're going to feel in your body. So I dare you to say that out loud. Feel free to write that. I should be exactly where I am. That thing, that person that left me, that situation, the bank account, that should be exactly where it is. All of it. Feel the power in that. That's where your power is. You should be exactly where you are. Doesn't that feel good to even write that? Most of us really are tricked to think we should be somewhere different. Man, I should be right here. Imagine if I was like, I got to get to the end of the call. I can't get time to move any faster. So me just saying that is totally crazy. Like time will move at its space, right? I don't want to get to the end of the call. I want to see what's unfolding. 
And we always are trying to get to the end and not letting whatever unfolds unfold. So my dare to you is to believe and know and feel in your body that you should be exactly where you are. And we don't know why. We don't need to know why. We don't need to make sense. I should, so I should be in this situation where someone left me. So I should be in this situation where I'm really sad. Totally. You know how I know? Because you are in that situation. So who are we to argue with that situation? You're supposed to be in it because you are. It's kind of something Byron Katie pointed out, but I know that was supposed to happen because it did. That's power. That's really exciting. And the greatest in the world are in a constant practice of full acceptance of where they are because every time things aren't the way your ego thought it should be, it's an opportunity for magic growth. So when you go, oh, I'm, my situation isn't perfect, you're in an opportunity for magic growth inside of you. Every person that I've worked with on my 7.30 call pretty much, we found that every time they were in pain, it was the opening to something new. And we go, thank God you didn't get your situation the way you wanted it because you would have never learned this. Thank God that situation that you think is bad happened because you would never have learned all the things that you need to learn. So a huge revelation is there's the things that you think that you want and the things that your ego can see that you want are often the things that if you got them, you would feel just enough abundance and keep buried all the stuff inside you that stops you from actually seeing who you actually are. So sometimes we get the thing we want. If only I had a million dollars, then let's say you get a million. Let's say you win the lottery. Oh my God, I got the million dollars. How cool. Now you have no reason to go deeper. Now you have no reason to meet yourself. Now you have no reason. Oh man, if only I could get that relationship that exact way. Oh, okay, you got it. Everything's fine now. So there's no reason to grow. There's no reason to go deeper. Now I'm not saying so don't have anything, but I am saying just know that if things aren't going how you thought you wanted them, that doesn't mean they're not going right. And if they aren't going the way you thought you wanted them, get excited about what could be coming up. Get excited about what this means and then go deeper. The level that you wanted it at isn't working, so let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. What is trying to emerge? Let's go deeper into our stomach. Let's go deeper into our soul, into our legs. That's where your power is. You don't need anything when you're fully in your body. And when you get into your body, oh, and you stay there and stay there and stay there and don't want anything, it'll tell you magic stuff. It'll tell you the next step. It'll tell you everything, but you gotta listen long enough to actually be there. It'll, 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 it, it'll show up. You have to, exactly, Shauna, you have to be complete, 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 and know you're complete, and you are complete. Yes, society said your bank account should be this way. Society said you should be this way in a relationship to get you to constantly feel lack. That's an old bullshit consciousness that is not working anymore because there are a lot of people that have had the situations exactly how they wanted them and they become some of the most depressed people on the planet because their situations are perfect so there's no soul connection actually calling them to something bigger so don't think if your situations were perfect you'd be happy it's not necessarily true you could be happy, but it's not necessarily where your soul is. And all the stuff that you need to actually be fulfilled and happy is inside you. There's nothing outside you that'll get that soul fulfilled feeling. Take that in. Nothing outside of you, ever. Some things can help you bring yourself closer to yourself, but just so you know, you can also do that yourself. You can also listen to silence for a while. You can also just feel the air around you as if it's a legitimate, actual thing that's trying to talk to you. Usually we can't hear it because our mind is so clouded with later and back then and he doesn't understand and yeah, right, and blah, blah, blah. That's just a movie playing in front of your face and you just got to understand it's a movie so you can listen to around you, so you can listen to right here. You can listen to now. This is not bullshit crazy stuff. Right now, you are here. Can you feel that you're here right now? Can you feel the space around you? Can you feel the energy around you? Awesome. <clears throat> so 
Welcome to everybody. Welcome to everybody who's new on this. Um, I say that because one of the things we're doing right now is we're reviewing amazing uh, entrepreneurial revolutions, right? Things that can help you not only in your regular life, but in your entrepreneurial life. Just to, could be to build a side income. It could be to create an income for yourself, but bringing your purpose into the world. I think these principles that are coming through are some of the most exciting things that I've ever, ever done. I'm so, every time Dan, we, we create this stuff and then Dan sends me the video the day before we release it and goes, how's this look? And I look through it and I'm so excited about these principles. These are the real principles. We don't just want the principles and the entrepreneurial revolution that just say, you know, when you make a video, it should be under three minutes or market yourself this way or create scarcity here. We want to know who you are. We want to know how to build a, a foundation. We want to know how to actually create something amazing. So let's talk about what this week's episode is about. And if you didn't see it, still check this out because it's really, really powerful. This week's episode was about what you're actually selling when you sell anything. Even if you're a salesperson for another company, make sure you realize what you're actually selling with everything on the planet is a feeling. I don't care if you're selling a car, you're selling the feeling. When you go at Zillow and you look through houses on Zillow, what do you, what do, you do? You feel excited when you see a certain type of house. You feel connected, you feel freedom, right? You feel all these different things. So people often don't know that that's what they're trying to offer to the world. If you're a coach trying to sell something to the world, if you're an author trying to sell something to the world, right? What you might be doing is thinking, I got to get my books out. No, you got to get the feeling out via the books. You got to get the feeling out via your Facebook post. You got to get the feeling out via the sale of your car or your blender or anything else you're offering. What's the feeling? What's the feeling? Every single thing we're doing is based on wanting to feel a feeling. Everything we're doing is based on wanting to feel a feeling. What does that person dating make you feel everything, right? So one of the things you have to do if you want to sell that feeling is become that feeling. You have to embody that feeling. So one of the things I do is I live the feeling as much as I can. I go, I want to feel freedom today, not even for the purpose of selling something. I just want to feel free. So I listen to my meditation. I listen to silence. Yesterday, Dan and I collegoed for like almost an hour yesterday and oh my God, I felt so powerful. The Calego exercise, if you don't know, is this awesome exercise where we talk about the future as if it was past tense. And Dan and I talked about this year and the feeling that expanded was so big. We were just talking about what we were letting go of to make room to make the AEP, the, the absolutely everything pass, the most important, greatest thing on the planet. So all these gigs were let go of and all these plans and that we were planning to do the Kylego every morning at the same time that I was doing the 730 calls. So this was so exciting because we just sat there and Kalegoed and Kalegoed and we just said, I remember we talked about this coming year as if it was last year. And we were like, I remember this last year just finally fully expanding. And what my breakthrough was, if you guys are interested in this, what my breakthrough was, was <clears throat> there's still a part of me that cares about pulling anyone else up. You know, when I worked with people in the one-on-ones, it's always often that I'm pulling someone up and that's awesome and I care about that. But what would happen if I wasn't energetically pulling anyone up and just going up myself? Like I know these principles and often I'm showing them to someone else and I'm just curious what would happen if I just released that now and fully lived it. I actually think other people could go up faster because guess what? It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to go up. See, sometimes we hear a speaker and we think they're going to pull me up. And when we do that, we end up handing our energy over unconsciously. And often as a speaker, I'm like, okay, let's go. And I would love to go, boom, I'm going to go straight up with myself and my team. I'm going to move into my power as much as I can by not pulling someone up and seeing what happens. 
It would be like if you were a, a health coach and a workout coach, you were a fitness trainer, and you spent more time coaching other people than just working out. Imagine if the fitness trainer, instead of coaching other people, just said, I'm going to spend more time working out, more time resting, more time eating what I want to eat, then immediately they might create so much change that people will be more inspired by their change than them in a one-on-one -on -one situation with people. So that's why energetically, I'm really excited to let go of doing the 730 calls and just work on me and our team. I think that we're going to make way better stuff than we've ever made. I felt a shift in my body. I felt like we are going to go up so much faster. And I think that that might hopefully encourage you or I could be a space from being the highest uh, I could be. And that might encourage you to go, I'm just going to go because I see the example of it versus, and I, I, thank you, William, the stuff's great already. I'm not saying I don't love to do that. I'm just saying, what would happen if every 7.30, instead of me showing other people it, I'm just doing it, and then maybe I'll make a video from it, but not be pulling someone up energetically, being that space in my own vibration, right? So I wanna offer you that too. What if in the times where you're helping someone else up, in the times where you might be coaching someone and pulling them up, what if, all the stuff that you know you lived because I promise you when we're coaching and writing stuff and getting into this, we're screaming at ourselves, right? I'm giving myself the advice. So I'm going to live it, right? More and more and more on a higher level. And just know you are too. You're giving yourself that advice. When people are coaching passionately, they are screaming at themselves. There's a reason you understand it because you know what you need to do. And our last ditch addiction that <coughs> we are going to release is the need for other people to get it. The need for other people to understand. That's, that's my last, just I'm gonna take this part of me that, that still lingers a little and wants someone else to understand it as a way to not have to fully live it, as a way to not have to actually fully live it, right? And go, see, Karen says that's scary big, right? Isn't that exciting? Let's, let's take what we know other people should do. Think about when you say, oh man, if only my parents knew this, if only my spouse knew this, if only people, if any part of time you go, if only people understood, boom, that's what you gotta do. That's what you have to do. If you think if only people understood, the reason they're not changing is because you're not fully living it, all the way and you just think if only they understood then i'd be happy because my trigger is that they don't know it so i'm going to ask them to do this thing around my trigger versus actually me transcending the trigger by living it myself and not needing anyone else to get that oh everything every exactly constance total projection if only if only if only that person understood this boom if only that politician knew this. If only, no, nope, if only you did what you know, not you know it. There's so many things you know, right? Tony Robbins says there's a ton of people that know when to do, know what to do, but very few people do what they know. And your power is if you do what you know. Think of how many times we think, if only I meditate every day, and then we don't do it. If only, that's where your power is. If you just start meditating, Remember, I'll, I'll repeat this over and over and over again. It's easier done than said. One of the things people love to do is declare what they're going to do, talk about it, bounce around actually doing it. And I promise you, if you just wake up and you start meditating for an hour, it'll be easy. It'll be done in an hour. And all of a sudden you have all the answers. But I can't tell you how many people I know skirt around discussing meditation or skirt around discussing going to the gym, creating plans for later while not just starting to meditate. Remember, the universe doesn't understand what you're going to do. The universe understands what you're doing, and you're either on the treadmill or you're not. You're either meditating or you're not. There's no part of you that has to figure out a long-term plan. You can just say, Am I meditating or not? Because some people become professional declarers. Some people become incredible at saying what they're going to do. 
Some people go, man, it's so great. I'm about to work out. I'm doing this thing. And I've done that a ton, right? But how cool would it be if we just stopped declaring and showed results because we did it? Oh my God. And that's where my big shift is, the release of needing someone else to get it because I can feel the lingering parts of me that could do this a little bit more with myself. And I wanna dare you to do that. I want you to think of anything you passionately wanted someone else to do or know. If only blah, blah, blah. If you feel triggered that someone else isn't getting it, you want to do that. You are screaming at yourself to do that and you have a right to do that. And I can't tell you how many times I finish coaching someone and then hear myself go and go, okay, what did I learn and what do I need to do? And then I go do it. But I heard what I need to do because I let myself loose by offering the advice to someone else and then I check in at the end of it and go, what did I need to do, right? So I'm only doing all these things because I wanna feel a feeling. And I want to feel that feeling and make that the only thing. See, some people say, I'm going to do this for me and then use that to change the world. That's too much work. Just do it for you. The byproduct is going to be the world, but just do it for you. Just do it for you. Make it so simple. The only thing I have to do is meditate right now. Go. <sighs> and when you go, I'm going to do this and then shift my spouse. Too much work. I promise you. All the things you need to do with this will be done. So you don't have to think, I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to do this. You just think, the only thing I got, I'm doing is this right now. Not even I got to do this, I'm doing it. The second you think you got to do that, don't start coming up with a plan. Do it. The second you go, I got to start meditating. Don't start writing down on a calendar how much you're going to meditate as much as you just want to do it right now, right? Alia says, what is the feeling you are looking for? The feeling that I'm really into is expansion. That's a feeling, I'm ex I feel like I'm expanding, okay? Here's why, because the universe is always, always expanding. Now, society, I think overall, is contracting. So I can grab on to what society is doing, or I can grab on to the universe. If I go into the universe, there is a never ending field of possibility. And I know that every single time I meditate, I expand. I have answers that I couldn't see from before my meditation, right? So there's a constant expansive universe. And another word for that in a way is evolution. And that's why my events are called Evolving Out Loud. I'm evolving out loud, but this year I'm going to also evolve alone. I'm gonna evolve alone. I'll still do these calls. I'll still bring things in, but I think because I'm going to be releasing the last ditch addiction of helping other people up each day and making sure people get it, I think that the, each call is going to change dramatically because I, you guys are going to be the main thing that I'm talking to. So, you know, there's going to be days where uh, I'm doing eight hours of meditation. There's going to be days where our team's going to be collagoing all day. There's going to be, this is what I want to do. And I want to see what insights are available and what expansion there is because it's already here. The insights, the ideas, the the million dollar ideas, the possibilities, the changing of the world, all those things are already right here. Most of us just aren't tuned into right here. We're tuned into right here. Here's like, oh, do this, allow this to happen, change the world this way, boom, do this, go to bed earlier, meditate, sit under a rock, listen, sit under a rock. So it's doing these things and most of us are like da -da 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 in our head, looking at our problem, looking at society, looking at the pain, and we don't see this is right here. This is fucking right here. Take that in. There are possibilities and you right here. The true you is right here. So the feeling I'm offering you is freedom, expansion. You'll also feel connection in your body. And I want to dare you to realize with everything you're offering, even if you go on a date with someone, often you're selling something when you go on a date, right? Being with you. 
be in the feeling you want to sell. Okay? Be in the feeling. The feeling. So you have to be in the feeling. You're not, you don't have to want the feeling. You have to be the feeling. Everyone will want to work with you if you are the feeling that you're trying to offer. So if I'm in expansion and I'm just bringing that to the world, I'm not even thinking of I hope everyone in the world expands because then I'm in a place where I'm codependent on that. But if I am expansion, then people will be reminded expansion exists and they will start doing it. What are you more inspired by fitness wise? Someone who's overweight telling you that you can become fit or someone who just loses weight and doesn't even offer anything saying you should do this, right? When you just see someone actually work out, right? Or become really fit, you are reminded that that's possible. You're reminded that you can do that. So many people are coaching and that would be the equivalent of someone who's telling you to do it while they aren't doing it themselves. And some people are doing it themselves, but we have to do it more with ourselves than need other people to do it. And if you have a job that doesn't allow you to feel that feeling, then it might be time to look for another job, right? So everyone take a deep breath before we go forward. And I'm gonna go into your questions. Take a deep breath, just feel connected. And ask yourself, first of all, what is a feeling that you would like to feel? What's a feeling you would like to feel? And think of something that you want really badly. Do you want a bunch of money? Do you want whatever? And then think of what the feeling actually is that that thing gives you. So Dr. Dre says happiness. Shauna says, I'm so present, just feeling love and joy and expansion, feeling spirited, feeling so present right now, freedom. I'd like to feel freedom. Now take in that you are freedom. You are freedom. Now when I say that, the ego will kick in and go, no, I'm not. And it will need your past to prove that. But if you stay right here, you are freedom, peace of mind, joy, peace, radiance, play, wonder, calm, enthusiasm, peace. Allow yourself to just feel it. It's already here. It's available. Just stay here and don't judge your circumstances. Just stay here and don't judge your past. Just stay here and don't judge your future. You are freedom. Embody it. Embody it. Remember, life doesn't attract what you want. It attracts what you are. So if you want what something gives you, instead directly give you that feeling right now. Bliss, bliss, connected, oh, grounded, centered, cozy, health. This is so good. Brenda says, this is work. And it's only hard work to your old story. It's only hard work to your goals. It's only hard work to your expectations and your limitations. It's not hard work to be f the freedom that you actually are, right? It's not hard work. It just is, just be here. So let's feel what wants to come through for a second. If we just let ourselves be here, I want you to notice all the stuff that comes up that is trying to prevent you from feeling those things and bring the freedom and the connection to those things. That is not you. Everything that's coming up is not you. Please take that in. Every limitation that comes up is from your past. It's trying to leave the way going to the bathroom works. Let it come through from your place of freedom or compassion or love or connection. So if you hold space right now, limitations will come up, right? Ah, oh, well, it's not working for me. Let it be there. I don't get this. Let it be there. I'm confused. Let it be there. Confusion's only the mind. It's all past. Something tells me you understand this more because we've been doing this every week. Don't you have to heal your past, though? No, because it's already self-healing if you just see it. You can't heal your past. Do you understand that? 
you can't heal your past at the same level. That's like trying to heal third grade from third grade. All you have to do is go to fourth grade. Look at your past. You're a bigger space. Remember, everything before today is actually a different human being. Everything before today is a lot of different cells, a lot of different stuff. Chelsea says, what about PTSD? Well, I can tell you that David Lynch, the famous director, has done a massive amount of meditation with people and shown to minimize PTSD heavily. But here's what I believe trauma is. I've talked about this on another call, but I'll answer that. When you're a kid, sometimes we have trauma, right? And when trauma shows up, it's sometimes bigger than the capacity that you are. And when it happens, your body goes, okay, I remember this, but it's too much for me to handle, so I'm going to store it. It'd be the same as if you were in kindergarten, right? And when you're in kindergarten, you hear about algebra. Now, we're not going to learn algebra, but you're going to store it in the side. And we're going to wait till you're in 12th grade or whatever you learn, calculus or algebra. So when you meditate, it's like you're going up grades. When you meditate, you expand. You are able to handle more. When you meditate, you go beyond the old you. The more you, <laughs> you meditate, you go up grades. So you're <clears throat> you, like, now picture that the grades are like your current age of consciousness. You might be in kindergarten of consciousness, but you've had trauma that a 12th grader in consciousness can handle. When you meditate, it goes, oh, here's first, gr first grade. We can now handle more pain and more excitement. We can handle bigger things and smaller things. Then second grade, then third grade. Then you get to 11th grade and it goes, okay, you're about to learn calculus because you have the capacity to handle it. So when people meditate for a long time, often old traumatic things start to show up because you've become a big enough space for it to be there. And it can be there and leave because you're now in a space of connection to the moment that actually is bigger than the trauma. So if it shows up when you meditate, that means it's about to leave. So the more you meditate, it's almost the more muscle you have. It'd be like this. It'd be like if you worked out every single day. I have a client, a dear friend, Jason Hartnov, who, who is like, he meditated every day, meditated every day. He meditated like 60 days and then was able to handle big stuff. Right? So it was like he could suddenly bench press 300 pounds. And then all these things were happening. The negative things were leaving and the big possible possibilities were showing up into his life. And he was excited about it. So he stopped working out, meditating, which would be like now you can bench press 200 pounds, but you have 300 pounds of success happening. And now it feels bigger than you can handle right? So that's what meditating does. It's almost like you're constantly building emotional muscle, emotional space. And we all have trauma, but no trauma is bigger than what you are. Nothing. You in this moment is more powerful. It might take time for it to go, before we deal with that thing, we got to deal with this trauma or this thing or, or releasing whatever. We got to deal with this. I'm going to, when you meditate, it's going to go, I'm going to deal with whatever I want to deal with. When you meditate, it goes, I'm going to show you what I feel like showing you. See, sometimes we meditate and go, I need the answer to what I should do about my career. And then you meditate and it's like, yeah, you remember when you, whatever, ate a Snickers bar and your mom yelled at you when you were 10? And you're like, why is this showing up? I want that thing. And it goes, yeah, you got to heal this thing first. You can't have that thing because you're still scared about the Snickers bar issue and you have this thing that's way bigger to you. So we have to transcend these little things so you have the capacity via the moment to heal everything that you're not, right? Then you have the capacity to handle this. Now, let me give you an example of why this matters with success. I was working with a lady who's on this call right now who's awesome named Ann Skinner and who just wrote, wow, oh my God, while I said her name, exactly. But I was talking to her about something that I've been talking about with a lot of people, which is that there are so many people that want to become big, but they care what people think. Now, check this out. If you're going to be Oprah or whatever, Mr. Rogers or whatever, if you're going to be those people, you have to still have the capacity to deal with 10,000 people a day shitting on you. That just happens. Mathematically, it can't not happen. No matter how big you get, you're going to have to, if you get huge, have 
tons of people hate you. So Oprah is known by the entire world. So she has to have a capacity for it to be normal for 10,000 people a day to shit on her, right? However, if you can handle that, you also have the capacity to handle billions of people being obsessed with you, right? So I know people are like scared of what five people think. Now, how could, if you're scared of what five people think of you, how could you be able to have the exact same capacity for 20 people to like you? So when you meditate, you become a bigger capacity for it. So Stacy Harder, who's a dear friend, says, what do you do? When trauma comes up, do you let it go? Just let it be there. My answer to that is keep meditating. Don't do anything. If you see something, that's because it's leaving. If you see something, that's because it's leaving. Only our ego says, I have to do something with this. Are we getting that? Because you can keep meditating and break off of the you that thinks there's an action that has to happen on this trauma, right? This is really, really, really important. Do nothing because if it shows up, it's leaving. It's almost like you meditate the first minute and it's like, oh, you're listening to science. Like, okay, I can't do this. Oh, you are doing it. And you think this is you. Oh, you are doing it. Oh, it's working. You think this is you. Then those three voices are talking and you're here. You're now the separate one. You go, oh, wow, I thought it was that voice. And then that voice, there's four voices now. Oh, I thought it was that voice. And you're like this fifth person here that's looking at these things. And you keep breaking off every second. And the longer you meditate, the faster every second you break off of that person, that person, that person. They also are, they're almost like animation. It's like these old parts of you are flipping off and you're becoming an animation where you're the space looking at the person who had the trauma. You're the space looking at the forgiveness. You're the space looking at this. And the longer you meditate and you just let things come up, boom, there's that time I was yelled at. Boom, there's that time I was abandoned and you don't do anything. You will watch them show up like this. You'll be watching. Boom, there's the time I was abandoned. And it just keeps being there. You hold the capacity to let it be there. Don't try to fix it. Don't try to chase it. Don't try to run away from it. Don't suddenly stop meditating and go eat something. That's what usually causes addiction. This thing we perceive is bigger than us. So we need to go overeat. We need to become Facebook addicts, whatever. Just keep breaking off, like keep doing it. Then another you, this hand's here and another you breaks off. And then you're way at the, the trauma part of you is way over here and it's quieter and quieter and quieter and quieter, right? eventually they're quieter and you start to live in a day where you're more here and the silence is louder and the ego is totally still there, but it's quieter, right? So you start to become the space looking at the quietness of it and the little thing that thinks it needs to get there, but you're here and then you meditate again and the ego gets a little bit quieter and a new you breaks off again, a new you breaks off again, a new you... Oh man, when you actually listen to silence for a couple hours a day, all those yeah buts are gone. You aren't doing things you don't want to do because your people pleaser isn't running the show. Your fear of your trauma isn't running the addictions. And you suddenly are a loud space of possibility. And because the ego is so small, the expansion is doing the talking. And it goes, boom, do this. The expansion goes, do this. And they're callings that take you beyond you. And when you say yes to that thing, then you're on a new channel that never had the trauma because now you're on a higher channel more in this moment. Because whenever you step into a new, many parts of your old story fall off. So many parts of what you're not fall off, right? And when they do, you're moving more with the universe. Like when you're skydiving, for instance, I've never skydived, but I, I'm imagining that this is what happens. Um, when you skydive, you are not thinking of your old traumas. You're in the moment, right? Whenever you do something that's on the edge of your life, when you're whatever, hauling ass on an inner tube behind a boat, when you're doing whatever that's really crazy and on the edge in the moment, right? then you will discover that you are present and you're not in a place of the old story even mattering. Now, you don't have to skydive and, and be behind a boat 
to experience the moment. Meditation will take you there. You are the moment. If you just stop doing things that are nine and below, you'll be more in the moment. Sometimes you don't even need to meditate. Sometimes you just live a day without your phone. Sometimes you just completely let go of the things and the people that drag you down and keep your old story alive. You wanna be around the people and the things and in the house that only celebrates your new story only celebrates you in this moment, in that place. Boom, right? That's you. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. This is your power, this is your joy, this is you. This is exciting. So this is why meditating is so important. This is why connecting to yourself is so important. This is why this call is really, really fun today. I'm so honored to be here with you. Let's take a couple questions. I feel alive. I feel my expansion. I feel so good. Tessa says, whoa, 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 no phone. My ego just threw up a little bit. Isn't that funny? I one time remember getting on a plane and it had several connections and I decided to take my phone and check it in the bag. And I felt like I was putting my heart into it. It was so funny, which is why I was like, I have to do this. I was like, I'm going to go three flights or whatever it is without the phone. Because if I feel pain by letting go of my phone, I need to let go of my phone, right? Because that's bullshit. That is not me. But it did feel like my body, my heart, my ego, my story, my identity was in that phone. Boom. Let go of it. Because my identity is in here, not in an iPhone 8, right? What a weird thing. And you never feel good on the phone. You're just sitting there like, oh, like we don't need it right? Yes, we need it sometimes, but you don't need it as much as we use it, right? We don't need it every four minutes, right? They said the average American now every 12 minutes checks their phone. Isn't that insane, right? So when I realized that, I was like, okay, you just stay in my bag and I'm just going to (sighs) leave. So let's go to some questions uh, that you guys asked. This is so fun. I feel in flow with you guys and, and really enjoying being with you. Heather Coppinger says, can you talk about doing what you feel your body needs? Excuse me. Can you talk about doing what you feel your body needs versus pushing to accomplish goals? Yes. I've created tons of work and paintings by pushing myself. Okay. Something does feel to be missing, a heartfelt why. Okay. So do you feel you need to do the paintings? In other words, if you're pushing yourself, it might not be a calling. In other words, it could be a nine. Me doing stand-up comedy is totally my dharma in the past, but it isn't my calling right now. So that's just something to think about, Heather. Um, Maybe if you're pushing and forcing the work of paintings, uh, then it might not be your tenuous 1010. Since I started allowing myself to take what my body uh, is saying it needs, I haven't been creative. Okay. Are you sure you haven't been creative or have you not been creative the way that your ego says creativity works? It's the, because doing what your body says is creativity. It's the process I fell in love with. And when you say that, I think you mean in the past, but questioning what it's all for. I won't allow myself to create from my small story, wanting to be seen by others, but I'm struggling moving into creating from my heart. Heather, one thing I'm going to reflect to you is I feel just from what the way you wrote that, that you're incredibly aware. You're incredibly conscious. And you're discovering that even though your creativity is amazing, your painting and what you do, something tells me there's a capacity that's even bigger than that. And that reminds me of me going, well, isn't it my creativity, uh, me to do stand-up comedy? And then learning that it's not anymore. And my creativity now isn't even after this, after tomorrow night, it's not even to be touring on the road performing. I mean, that's creativity. I do evolving out loud on the road and flow. But to me, it's creative now for me to spend time with my daughter fully, hit a little vacation and relax, right? You are the flow. Exactly, Carlene. It's not that you do uh, painting. It's that you're about to paint your life, not necessarily only on a board. Um, so, and you also associate paintings as work. So there might be less joy in it. That could also be something to change. So the first question is, Heather, are you here on this call? And can we attempt to, (laughs) Constance says, I need a personal dictionary. Calego, Grimstall, Tenius 1010. Heather, can I give you a call? 
Can we bring you onto the screen? Can we attempt to? I know some people don't have the right internet, but I would love to pull you on. <clears throat> Is that uh, a yes? Give me a yes. I'd love to bring you on. Awesome. Okay, let's let's meet Heather, ladies and gentlemen. I'm calling you right now. Let's see if this pulls up. So I'm calling you, and if this doesn't work, we're going to have Lindsay attempt you, and we'll see what happens. If not, we'll go to the next question and see if we can answer it. Okay, it's accepted. We have Heather, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Oh, so exciting when we have you, someone on the screen. Heather, it's so nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. I feel nervous. <laughs> awesome. And? And I love that. Yeah. So what happens when you say, <laughs> I love that? I want you to really want to be nervous. I still feel nervous. And? And I love that. All nerves mean you're not fully loving it. You cannot okay. fully love it and have it be there. All nerves are a resistance to the current state that you're feeling. All nerves, right? So now how do you feel? And we can keep going until we're feeling <laughs> better. Totally cool. better. Awesome. So life is trying to expand you to a place to love your circumstances. That's why the nerves are there, to get you to actually keep loving it, keep loving it, keep loving it. So welcome to the AEP call. So happy to have you. Heather. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, so talk to me about your circumstance. I don't know if anything I've said was had any accuracy to it, but let's hear your situation and see if we can find some unconscious beliefs that might be in there, some limitations, some fears, maybe something new is trying to evolve. Tell me a little bit about your situation. Um, I think I've kind of considered that it might not be my tenniest 10, 10. Painting? Um, yeah, but I like I do still love the process. I love doing it. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel, I guess it also feels like a little bit heavy because I have this idea that it's supposed to support me. Like mm. I want it. I went to school for art and I kind of had this mindset that if I worked really hard and I pushed myself to be like creative and do a lot of really good work, then in time that would pay off and it would support me. Um, and I, that just feels so heavy. Mm. Yeah. So let's just look at that mindset because you might be bringing that old mindset into painting and having <clears throat> a totally different association for it. I mean, it sounds like you have a mindset that makes you feel contracted, still lingering in your body. Mm -hmm. Would that be true? Yeah. Okay, so can we, where do you feel that mindset that says, what was it again? You have to force yourself. You have to, well, say, could you say it once more? I want to make sure I say it the right way. Um, what, what part? What you just said the mindset says about the old way that you do it. Uh, What's, that I have to force it or I have to work really hard or what was Oh, it? I have to push myself to put out a lot of really good work and keep going and keep going. Yeah. I also like... I want to not be working and I want to be painting full time and I'm, and I'm not doing that. And I'm, I think one of the worst things that we say to ourselves, especially the achievers out there <laughs> is I have to get my voice out there. Who says, who says, let's just take a second and look at a higher option that might still get your voice out there. But if you ask your soul, what's true, what does your soul say you want? If you ask your soul, your expansion, your mm -hmm. heart, your connection, your freedom, what does it want in this moment? Does it want to get all your shit out there and, and force <laughs> push? Or what does it want right now? Freedom, happiness. Freedom. Excellent. So now ask your soul, what would bring freedom in this moment right now to me? Like right after this call for you to what? Is it to push a painting out? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, I don't know. Try something. Try anything. Is it doing nothing? That's kind of just been like all I want to do lately. I've been meditating. That That's kind of what I was thinking I was going to do after this. Yeah. Um, so meditating for you is freedom? Maybe. <laughs> So let me ask you this, would having the belief of I need to get my shit out and push really hard be in conflict with your evolving, with your freedom? Yes. 
right? So actually your soul wants freedom and your old story says, I have to get my shit out. So for the people on here who are coaches or doing these work that think I have to get it out, just so you know, you're sacrificing what your soul wants sometimes, right? Yeah. Because you think you have to do that. So soul takes a back seat to getting this work out, right? Yeah. So that's why there's sadness in there. Now, that doesn't mean that we aren't going to still do work, but it has to come from a guided place. So what happens if we have freedom? So you say meditation equals freedom. Your soul wants to meditate. I also feel like maybe I want to do that because I want to find like the answer. Mm. But yeah, you might, but also there is no answer. Yeah, right. right? Any part of you that wants to find an answer is a sign that you're holding on to something. Basically, if you want to find an answer, you're actually saying where I am is not okay. And if you feel it's not okay, there's something in you that we got to release, that we got to look at, that we got to love, right? So if you think I got to get somewhere, if you think that I got to get somewhere else, that's an escape from yourself. Anytime someone goes, I have to find an answer. I don't get it yet. I got to get there. That means you're trying to get somewhere other than where you are, and you have that because you're in resistance to where you are, because you're holding on to something that no longer serves you. There are parts of you that are trying to die right now. So <laughs> room so for this scary. New year. <laughs> yeah, not to you though. It's scary to your old story. So let scare come. Let scared come up. Let fear come up. Right. My hair just went to weird. Okay. <laughs> let fear come up. And let it just be there for a second. Can fear be there? It's so scary. Like you can tell, if it's scary, that means we're hitting it on the head, mm -hmm. right? If I just said you're a purple monster, you'd think I'm a crazy person because I don't know what I'm talking about. If I make this point, it scares you. That means it's hitting something you know to be true too. So who is it scary to? The part of me that does not want to change. Right, okay, beautiful. The part, the part of me that has to leap. So why don't we make not changing scarier? Let's see what happens. <laughs> what happens if you don't change for five years? I would be very Did depressed. Did everyone hear that? What happens if you don't change for five years? What happens if you don't leap for five years? What happens if you don't meditate for five years? What happens? You'll be depressed. Mm -hmm. So you can actually feel the trajectory you're on isn't your highest calling because you can feel what happens if you start the process of meditating and freeing yourself for five years. What happens five years later? Anything. <laughs> Anything. Holy shit. Who knows what could happen? What could be on the other side of that, right? So remember that you're feeling fear, but that's not you. That's the old story that feels the fear. Right. So where do you feel that fear? You're going to change. You're going to choose freedom over uh, pushing it out. Do you want to get rid of the belief? I have to push it out. Yeah. I have to push all this stuff. OK. Oh, so I, feel, I, I want to, but I just feel so much conflict between like I'm like 50, 50. Yes. Still the belief that that's how I need to operate my life and then trying to like be nicer to myself. And yes. Let me ask you this. What happens if you don't push? That the, the fear kicks in that says, I better push. Mm. What happens if you don't? I'm afraid that I will amount to nothing. <laughs> okay. And then what? And I'll be in debt forever. And then what? <laughs> um, and I won't be loved. I won't be loved. Okay. And then what? And then I die. <laughs> you die. If you don't push, you're going to die. Because you're not loved. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Like, does that sound like that's true? Mm, no. Now, if you listen to freedom, will you actually feel love right away? If you choose meditation and the truer you over the you that's got to push, would you actually feel love immediately? because you're gonna to connect to yourself and make you bigger than your old story and your old pattern. Mm. Yeah, I right? feel like I feel like if I, oh, I'm crying. Awesome. <laughs> um, I feel like if I let go of the idea of like 
pushing my work out, then like that part of me might die and I might go in a different direction. And that scares me because I've worked so hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you worked hard. So we better keep that pattern going because you worked hard <laughs> before. Now, I've used this example before, but remember, if you were on a plane and you bought a plane ticket and you had the option of parachuting when it was going down, you wouldn't be like, well, I bought the entire ticket, so I might as well stay on this plane until it crashes. <laughs> yeah. Right? You'd get out even if you totally didn't pay, for, you know, you didn't get what you paid for, it saves your life, right? So we do this, we go, I've been in this relationship for 10 years, and even though it doesn't align, I should stay in it because I've been in it this long. Well, we might as well just stay in it forever because this thing has been here before, <laughs> even if it's going straight down. I don't care if it's yeah. 90 years you've been doing this. I do, also, I do also really love it <laughs> at the same time. Yes. I love stand up too. I love performing on stage also. Yeah. There's what you love and then there's what you really love. <laughs> I love performing. I really love playing with my daughter. I really love that she actually holds her own hand when she walks down the stairs to support herself. Like she'll go dada hand and then she'll go mm -hmm. baby hand and she'll hold her own hand to support her <laughs> down Aww. the stairs. I usually can't talk about her without crying. I can talk about what I do and not cry, right? So my body is telling me, go to where the edge of your heart is right now, right? It's telling me, do something different. Now, what we're tricked into thinking is if I do that, I'm going to never do anything again, <laughs> yeah. right? Which is funny. People think if I meditate, I'm just going to live under a tree forever, which is like saying if I eat, I'll always eat every minute for the rest of my life. No, you'll be full eventually and you'll stop eating. Right. So you need meditation like you need food. It's there sometimes and then you don't. Right. So right now you feel like you need freedom and your freedom is calling you. And remember, too, you can always switch back like tonight. You're just going to meditate. Right. Mm -hmm. But what happens if you listen to that meditation for an hour? And it starts to release all those old beliefs and you start to see the lie that they are. And then you're going to be right here. And from that place, you're right here. And then the next day will happen. Right? And you'll be fine. But I love that we see that you're crying because you're releasing an old belief. There's some fear. If you don't do this, you aren't loved. Now, usually that's the sign of a childhood belief. If I don't push, who doesn't love you? Or who might not be proud of you? Mm. What could happen? Did you have a dilemma where you didn't feel you pushed enough and then you were abandoned? You were, ang someone was angry at you? I feel like it's kind of also helped to give me like a sense of identity. Mm. Like I've always been kind of shy, kind of reserved. And it mm. like spoke for me. I so you got a sense of identity. <laughs> okay. So that identity, is that you? Mm, no. <laughs> I, mean, I, I get it. I had an identity as a stand-up comic and an actor from 10 Things I Hate About You and not another team. I got all this identity. And I got a lot of love for that identity. Right? That was great. And then... If someone didn't know the movie or know who I was, then I didn't think I was anybody. If someone actually met me without the fame or the stand-up or the success, then they don't know me. So I actually hid behind the identity. Mm -hmm. So what's really cool is your identity is trying to fall apart so we can meet you. We'd rather connect to your heart than your identity. Some of the most depressed people are stuck in an identity, especially people who make tons of money. They're like, who I am is the Porsches in the garage or who I am is the millions of dollars. I know of people that had a billion dollars go down to 500 million and they're some of the most depressed people in the world. <laughs> right? So we don't know that we want an identity. Is that an interesting thought? Like we all have different identities from what we were before. God, everything was so great when my circumstances were this 10 years ago. My circumstances when I was doing this five years ago, oh my God, everything was rolling. No, you were just evolving. That's mm -hmm. why it felt good. That was an evolving. And today you're getting to evolve again, right? 
that yeah. if you keep doing what felt good before, then you might not be evolving anymore. Yeah, it, I it, feel that. Yeah, it was going second grade to third grade. And now you're in fifth grade trying to use third grade to get to sixth grade. Right? So we can't evolve the same way. That's why we fall in love with someone and then often they don't feel as good the next day because I was evolving with you yesterday, but now you don't feel the same way. We got to evolve internally. Meditation, I find, is pretty much always evolving me so far, right? So, so there was an expansion. Was it the actual pushing that made you feel good or was it that when you were pushing, you were leaving an old story that did things differently? Yeah, I think like when I was pushing, like the expansion, the learning, it felt like I was growing. There was a physical um, like outcome I liked that. Hmm. Physical outcome. Or, or the physical result. So if we do something right now and get a physical result, like make a bunch of money and all that stuff, would that feel the same on your edge as before? Uh, it would feel exciting because I haven't had it. <laughs> but on the same way <laughs> that it did before? What do you, I, I don't know if I understand. Well, the first time you do that and you push and you create something, you make a bunch of money, it might have been that you're doing something you had never done before. Mm -hmm. Right. So then we get addicted to the way we did it and then we do it again, but there's yeah. no growth behind it because you already know how to do it. Right. Right. So it's that you grew is what felt good. Right. So if you do it again, do you think it'll feel as good truly no. as it did before as fulfilling as it was the first time? No. Right. So what, so what it felt, what did it feel like before though? I know it might not be different be in the future, but what did it feel like before? Um, limitless, like limitless. Any, anything was possible. Like so, I could just mm -hmm. take, take it into any direction. So it was limitless before. Now doing it again, it sounds like from what you wrote, feels limiting mm -hmm. so before I think, this list, what goes that i think like i have the idea of now that you're saying this like maybe i think the only way to do what i'm doing is to create work show it in the traditional way that it's always been shown in like a gallery or mm. um i don't know like i the fear of having to quit my job like leap into that unknown is terrifying and let me like, ask I you feel like that's not an option for me. Do you have a website of your work? I don't. I started to. I have my Facebook artist page. Okay. Can we see it? Can we see it? Is that possible? Yes. Because yes. we'd love to see your work. Do you sell your work? I yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I was in the process of like opening a store. And I like got everything ready and then I just kind of stopped because I okay. felt like I, I wasn't in the right place. So I, I just like put everything on hold. Okay. Can you put the link up to your Facebook page for us? Yeah. Or shoot, I have to do all my security check because I'm coming in from a hotel. <clears throat> I'd love to see it. We all want to see it. Okay. <laughs> oh, Amelia already got it. My team is just boom. This team is so amazing. Okay. Let's see if I can see it without logging in because it wants to know, like, what's your mom's favorite dog? <laughs> okay. Whoa. How would you guys like to have that in your house? Do you sell these originals or copies of these? These are gorgeous. Thank you. I both. You sell both. <laughs> so what do these go for, just out of curiosity? Um, the prints, well, I'm not sure which ones you're looking at. I kind of... See a beautiful when, profile pick one on the top, and then it's like, oh, this purple, like, mm, mountains, lake, sunset one. I've actually, <laughs> I've never sold, like, a big one, but the, 
Well, your freedom is trying to do that right now. Yes. You've never sold a big one. Okay. What, what do you feel you'd like for it? What do you feel aligns for you? Like I put a lot of work in. So I think like 3000, 3000 for which one can I, for, for that mountain purple one, do you see that mountain purple with the lake? Uh, the profile one. It's like a third one. It's got, I see four trees and then a, a purple like backdrop to mountains and then a lake. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, I'm trying to open it. It's like, if I go to your website, it's or the, the thing. It's like one of the first ones that I see, but I, mm -hmm. I'm also not logged in. So it's showing me in a specific way. Oh, that one, the purple, yeah. the purple sky with the mountains. What, yeah. Yeah. What do you want for that one? I, uh, I have it listed for 85. Okay. If I got it, would you give me a discount? <laughs> if you what? If I got it, would you give me a discount? Yes. What would you, <laughs> of course. What would you give me for it? And Maybe I might even be in my back. <laughs> it might even be, it might even be in my background, uh, for many calls <laughs> mention you in the future. It's a lot smaller. It's, it's okay. nine by 12 inches. So you said the other one's 3000, which one's oh. that? That's the, trying to look at all of my stuff. <laughs> um, uh, Did you say 850? 850? $85. That's what I was selling that one. For. 85. Oh, sold. $85. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I'm totally sold. Are you kidding? I thought you were saying 8,500. No. <laughs> and I was going to talk you down to three. Grand. <laughs> okay. So 85 bucks. Yeah. I'll take that in a heartbeat. I'm going to give you more okay. actually, if you don't mind. I don't mind. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do so. So, the reason is so you got to bring your value up because these are amazing, right? Thank you. So can I give you 500 for it? <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm not going to let you just give it to me for 85. Is that the original? Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. So I might have it behind me on calls, which is that would be amazing. fun reminder of you, or maybe we can have it in the background of our podcast we're going to have soon. So, your, we have your Facebook page. Is there an email? Because I'm sure other people would love your work because you're actually legit and awesome. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to give you 500 because there's no way I feel like a robber taking that from you for 85. What size is it? Like a nine, nine inches by 12 inches. Okay. Yeah. It's a cute, like little, that's perfect. Yeah. I'll take it. So this is big, yeah. right? So one of the things you might not know, and one of the challenges you might have is you feel undervalued. You were going to yeah. sell that original thing to me for $85. I would feel that's unfair. Like you got to know that you're worth more because these are amazing. And you might even paint from more of your heart because maybe the paintings aren't the problem, but that you feel depleted because you don't feel that you're getting what you're worth. Is there any truth in that? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of truth in that. And then also I, they feel heavy because, because they said like, I don't feel like I, I haven't felt like I knew what my why was, like the message that I'm selling or the feeling that I'm selling necessarily. I don't know what it is. So I feel like trying to convince somebody to buy something from me, yeah, like to support my creativity felt heavy. Yes. Yes. You shouldn't have to do that. <laughs> you shouldn't have to do that. You just keep painting and get it out there. One way to do that is notice where you've cut your, and everyone hear this, where have you cut yourself off from receiving? I'll tell you one way. You don't have a website, right? Well, that was my, I was in the process of doing yeah. it, of starting at like a store, but. Yes, I get it. But I just think you should know. And then I want you to open your heart. Check this out. Check this out, everybody. I hope you all get something from this. I want you to open your heart to all the other ways you can get your work out other than in an art studio. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. <clears throat> My dear friend, Justin is, 
his his website's justineisen.com. He's he is a brilliant cartoonist and artist and everything like that. And he's been my best friend of 30 years. And I have often come up with so many different ways that he could do stuff. And now he does totally what he loves to do and works so beautifully. But I've come up with so many different ways. And I remember having inspired moments where I thought to myself, okay, when he got married, it was in a, a really cool old style trailer park. Okay, so we had this vintage like 50s type thing where we all stayed in Airstreams, right? It was so fun. And he actually drew the Airstreams that were there. Okay, then I had this idea where I was like, you could draw the Airstreams for everybody that stays in that park all the time and then have a bunch of copies of them for sale and then they can sell copies of them so people have the memory and then that opened up every vacation could have just an ison every vacation that people go on what if you have like for any resort people stay at you have this beautiful painting or cartoon of the resort that people can buy as a souvenir and you just have copies of them stacked you just do it once and then the place and you could split the money like there's billions of ways mm, you can get yeah. it right so that was one idea that came up in a second so one thing you might be thinking is you're thinking from an old paradigm i just get to art shows and that's it i yeah. want to offer you you know how to collego right Yes. Could you give me a Calego of how you brought in a million dollars this year doing art your way and it was your passion, your excitement, right? Yes. Yeah, can okay. you do that? We're going to do some big stuff because there's so much more trying to unfold and you're still going to meditate tonight and have that freedom. <laughs> we got into it too. Um, so this was actually part of my plan that I started doing and I stopped, but mm. okay, so I remember... I brought in a million dollars from my art because I finally opened, I launched my website and I started selling originals and um, limited edition prints. Um, I also, when I started creating the prints that I was working on, I had the idea in mind to make a book, like an art book. Um, mm. So I finally finished that. I wrote like kind of like a poetic short story um and i hooked up with a publisher and i got my book out there my art out there um, um i i don't know i feel and stuck you can, also, you can also bring in just things you did that <laughs> weren't necessarily immediately paint related, like that you decided to meditate more, that you didn't push, but you allowed the flow, right? That you mm. you listened and you were patient and you trusted and you weren't forcing anything, you were playing. And we also remembered that tons of people on this call were here. So you have a total new audience now. Not <laughs> everyone who sees the absolutely passive in the long run, because this video, remember, is going to be a part of a long-term entrepreneurial revolution series. So there's all mm. kinds of people forever that will see your work forever. So I remember you having a website up that was just badass and having gorgeous pictures. And we all realized how special it was to have original paintings in our house versus just having the newest car, a bunch of shit, like have something special, something that the artist did. Like we did stuff like that. And it was exciting to have this thing that we chose and were connected to because people love to support you, but they also love that you were actually really good. Like it wasn't <laughs> like we're just all doing a charity thing for you. It's like your shit's good, right? So I remember us people on the call choosing to support you. We all support each other, but also you're supporting them because that lake picture is almost a vision board for an idea of where I'd like to live. That mountain, those trees, <laughs> that sounds amazing. That place looks so gorgeous. I just can picture myself at that magical place, arbitrarily painted with a campfire just sitting there. So people realize the value of that. So that showed up forever. This video series showed up forever. Hell, if you wanted, maybe I put this video on YouTube too. So people could see, <laughs> you know, and see your work. What's this, uh, what's your website? Or, uh, or email, I'm sorry. Uh, Coppinger.heather at yahoo.com. Are you okay with getting floods of emails? Yes. <laughs> Coppinger.heather, C-O-P-P-I-N-G-E-R dot yep. H-E-A-T-H-E-R at what? 
at yahoo.com. At yahoo.com. So if people are interested in getting amazing original paintings, something people often don't even think about, but is something that really warms your heart up. One of my other clients, Valerie Ann, is so amazing. She's an amazing painter too. You should meet her because she's unbelievable. You guys should say hi. Um, but that we supported you and you supported us. God, maybe you did what my friend, I have another friend, Heather, who's a painter. You know what she did? She painted my soul. She painted like vision boards of like, she actually has a painting in my house that I have. And it shows like Madison Square Garden and a bunch of New York Times bestsellers. But it's also in this kind of, you know, it's just me holding a hand that's arbitrary, just kind of love and just showing like my soul and flowers and romance. But it was also a painted vision board, right? Most people's vision boards are like, looks like a ransom note, you know, with <laughs> cut out of magazines they hide in their closet. You could like have people's visions or their souls up and they can put it in their bathroom so they see it every day when they crap twice a day if they're on a fiber diet. <laughs> and you helped people to see their visions every day and bring income to people because they were in the vision of the possibility. You see what I'm saying? I love that, yeah. So this is how I want you to start thinking. I mean, this showed up in a couple minutes. You have a whole year to keep thinking on this level and thinking, I'm here to paint to shift the planet. I'm here to paint possibilities. I'm here to paint a new world. I'm here to paint peace. I'm here to paint nature. I'm here to paint love and joy and give people a reason. And then we got to bring a why in. Why are we painting this? Because we want people to free themselves by looking at it, right? Like something mm -hmm. like that. I love the idea of people like just kind of getting lost in a painting or any work of art. Yes. So if people asked you to paint their vision or something like that, would that interest you? Maybe, I, I yeah. Know, that might be too specific and not what you do. But it sounds I I have to be, like the idea of having like a lot of creative freedom with it, but totally but yeah. it would be your work. That there was nothing yeah. that I said to my Heather to paint it. Right. Yeah. Her name's Heather Smith and, and there was nothing I said to her like do it this way, this way, this way. She just, it was a painting of like my soul and all kinds of stuff and me in a meditative position, but you barely see people or things. They're kind of like in the distance, right? But whatever way it works for you, I want it to be your way, how you would do it, right? Yeah. So I'm the one, the purple painting that I did, I actually kind of, I did it with my mom. She was like my inspiration of it. Like those are her favorite colors. She's actually on the call right now. Oh, Her that's name's Laura. awesome. Funny I said, if someone said you're a purple monster and then I ended up buying your purple painting <laughs> and it turns out you have purple pants on, like, I didn't I know. Yeah. Like I just said that as an example and all of a sudden everything's purple. <laughs> Is this exciting? Yes. Okay. So give me a little more Calego also about how you took care of yourself, how you followed the freedom versus follow the push right? How you followed your soul, how you expanded. This was, this call we we're doing was a year ago. Where are you now? And what did you do? Uh, now I am a full-time creative individual. I don't limit myself to just painting. I do any type of creative project that inspires me. Um, I make millions and millions of dollars. Mm. Um, I go out and network and communicate with other artists and uh, find other artists that are interested in doing the same type of work. Um, I find venues like uh, nature resorts, uh, meditation centers that would love to have my work oh, there. yes yeah <laughs> yes we got your stuff to agape we got your stuff to different yes right meditation centers hell yeah restaurants like really cool organic restaurants maybe you could do painting oh. for them yeah for their that sounds, just thought that sounds great <laughs> anything else going? this is perfect yeah yeah <laughs> give me like another minute um my like whole body feels hot. Yeah, that's um, that that happens when we're doing on our edge. The heat shows up, and then it releases that too. Like, it's happening. You're in a higher vibration right now. 
Uh, okay, I keep going. Yeah. Um, I remember that I I remember that I started animating my artwork. I learned some animating tools and made it look all cool and kind of crazy wow. and um i don't know <laughs> what you've done is amazing you're just changing you're feeling it <clears throat> i'm going to give you a dare i'm going to ask you to skype with someone on this call for an hour a day each day for the rest of the week and okay. do an hour collega with them back and forth for them too so a collaborative Calego, so that you get on and you start the practice of being from the outcome. Stacy Harder says she'll do it, and she's brilliant. Stacy Harder was on my 6:30 calls. She's an she's a Calego master, and if you and her do it, that would awesome. be amazing. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So yes to Stacy. So Stacy, can you write her? You have her email, right? Um, if not, Lindsay will hook that up. So, isn't this fun, you guys? Awesome. Lorna says she'll do it too. Lorna also is amazing, who worked with me at Flow Group. I know so many of you. So yeah, so you got some options. Lindsay can hook you up with both. Um, and uh, is this exciting? It's very exciting. You feel that- I don't know how you talk and you read what people are saying at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> when you're in the moment, you can do so many more things at the same time. It truly is true. Like you're, when you're in the moment, you're not thinking of what I got later. So you're just here. Right. So yeah. when you're here, you're just seeing and you're reading and I'm also looking at you and I'm just like enjoying the moment. Really what I'm feeling is the air around me. I'm feeling the space and all this stuff's coming through for all of us. And, and you're going to be moving into that on a new level too. Right. Sounds great. Lindsay posted your email again, coppinger.heather at Yahoo. So you are amazing. You're amazing. Is it, how do you feel? Are you excited? You're going to expand over push, yeah. right? Yes. Can you see how much life's just trying to happen for you? You don't have to push. Life's trying to happen for you. It, it's the mentality of I got to push that makes you undersell yourself and say $85 for that gorgeous painting. Yeah. How many hours did it take you? Uh, five. Five hours. So you're saying your rate when you're that professional artist and you're totally not replaceable is fifteen dollars an hour to eighteen dollars an no. hour. Right? Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Does yeah. everyone hear that? My rate is I'm there's only one Heather Coppinger, and my rate is eighteen dollars an hour. You're almost giving yourself minimum wage to make original paintings that change our life. You're worth way more than that. At least if I give you five hundred and it took five hours. You made a hundred an hour. That's a good beginning oh, rate better. for an artist as good as you. It's a good starting rate, but <laughs> like you make way more. So, but not for me. I'm just jump starting. <laughs> yeah, we think you're amazing. Does this feel good? Very good. You feel seen and loved. Are you ready to expand? Are we going to expand this year? Yes, I'm ready. Awesome, Heather. I'm so honored to be with you. I'm honored to be with you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for feeling for Oh, why'd she go? Oh, no, my computer's dying. Oh, mine is too. But it's perfect because we went long anyway. So we're perfect. Ah. So let's give Heather a round of applause, everybody. It's totally cool, Heather. We were we were wrapped anyway. <laughs> give Heather a round of applause, everybody. Give Heather an amazing, a lot of love. Feel free to write her. Check out her stuff. Right now, her stuff, I'm telling you right now, is the cheapest you'll ever see it because Heather's about to be a legend in this world. And right now, she's selling her stuff for really affordable. And if you feel you're getting something for really cheap, feel free to go over and give to her a little more because we support artists here at the Absolutely Everything Pass. And I cannot wait to have the memory of tonight's call in my house and have that behind me. It's going to be beautiful. And Lindsay, would you coordinate with Heather after this call and get her the money and get her to mail uh, the painting? So awesome. You guys, what a fun call, huh? So that's what tonight's about. Feeling, being, expanding, and look what happens. We all expanded on this call. We all had so much fun. What a fun night, everybody. I can't tell you how honored I am to be with you. 
every week we do this, the Absolutely Everything Pass. We'll be back here next Wednesday again. We'll be back ready to go Wednesday. So continue to be on these calls. We always shift on these calls. We love you. It's been an honor to be with you tonight. I'm gonna say good night and just tell you guys, thank you for being here. Remember, you're invincible. I hope you got so much out of tonight's call. I sure did.